Okay. So good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Jason Hu uh, from Indigo Waters Institute. Uh, today, I would like to share this report published by a Global Ghost Gear Initiative, which is Triple GI. Uh, they published this uh, technical report uh, in 2017, uh, which is a math method to locate direct fishing gear, uh, a guidance document of the Global Ghost Gear Initiative Catalyze and the Replicate Solution Working Group. Uh, so today I would like to share the something about the uh, direct fishing gear and how to uh, detect or how to uh, locate the fishing gear on the sea floor. So next. Uh, so that the, the the, the goal of locating uh, ALDFG, which is ghost gear, is undertaken for two main reasons. Uh, the first is to answer the research questions related to the fate and the transport of lost in fishing gear. Uh, because uh, it may be very difficult to, to remove or re retrieve every lost fishing gear, derelict fishing gear, because maybe the water is too too depth or it's 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 unworth to spend so much money to to remove that. But it's very important to 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 survey the hot spot or to understand the the reason why there's there's derelict fishing gear. So first one is to answer the research questions. So the second, and the second is to remove lost fishing gear from the marine waters, thus eliminating the its harmful impact on the two species and the habitat. So we all know about the entanglement of uh, fish gear to to di different marine animals like sea turtles, sea birds, and sea mammals, and the, the habitat like the coral reef and other our habitat. So that they introduce five different methods uh, about how to locate the, the, the DFG. The first is solar surveys, and the second is surveys, visual surveys, and the underwater visual surveys, and dragging or grabbing surveys, and the fishery data and the local knowledge. So let's go from the first. So the first is uh, sonar surveys. Uh, in this document, they introduce three different of uh, sonar surveys. The first is like a, I call it general sonar. I just I think it's most uh, popular sonar system used by like by fishing boat or it's a, like a single beam sonar. So you you can use this sonar to to detect the, the, mm, the material or the substrate on the seafloor and also on the, on the water columns. So they mentioned about the project in Brazil called Lost Fishing Gear Project. So you, they have this equipment uh, combined with a GoPro camera and a, a, a flashlight or a approach a, a lighting systems and a sonar so in this in this figure you can see the, here is a the sea floor but it is something suspension here and they believe it's a, a drift net so they will uh, use divers to to confirm or use this camera to confirm that is a a, a, a net and and prepare the clean up but the limitation of this kind of sonar is uh, the area. It's they can uh, the, they can only detect the the water current just below their sonars. So the area is very small. 
And the second one is side scan sauna. And uh, they, they mentioned many different samples, uh, I mean, cases uh, in, in U USA. Uh, this one is in Pujong Song in, in Washington. And uh, actually, uh, this, this, this team or this program has, I think it has more than 10 years experience in use size scan sonar to locate and remove the sea, sea floor, like crab, crab part, crab, tra crab traps or, and the nets. And also the author of this uh, GG triple GI report also part of this team. The the N, I think NRC the natural resource consultant this Joanne uh, drink wind also part of this uh, size scan sonar uh, team. So so size scan sonar is a is a different equipment. They usually use a a long shape like this or or it's called tall fish, and they have so. It, the two sides, the left side, and the, they can uh, release the, the the wave sonar wave on both sides in in a wide of the range. It may be uh, uh, fifty meter at each side, so the whole transect can be one hundred meters wide uh, width. So you can see under these flats. Uh, sea floor is some part. Uh, this is it a um, crab trap or crab part to catch the Dungeness crab. So it's uh, very distinguished on the flat surface. And this this is a uh, Huckle uh, Klein. It's probably something about the the uh, line. Uh, in in this there is a company called Fin Company, which has uh, they have a very detailed website I can share with you on this side scan sauna technique. So here is uh, their website, the Fin Enterprises. Uh, I think they have the Mr. Fin. This one has a lot of experience on use the side scan sauna to to detect the uh the the fishing gear so in, they have a gallery here like they can use the side scan sauna to to find the the sink boat airplane and a driftwood and the sea glider and the cork cars so many different items on the sea for also the gears like crab part these are crack cups these are uh, strings and net. So they say this kind this probably a, a net and a lot of crab pot, crab pot. And storage and also the fish, they can use this, uh, let's say the uh, resolution uh, of these size scans on a probably about one meters. Uh, so these are eel grass and pipeline or out for, for maybe for some water in water treatment planet, plant. And also body, I think uh, is it, maybe you can use in many prospect. And I think that's very important. They have this size scan sauna 101. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh no. Uh, so in this, in here, they, uh, have explained so much detail about how to operate this size scan sonar and uh, how to how it's the uh, best. Uh, uh, you, I mean, it's very important or very uh, key to adjust your sonar equipment and and to transfer the the data into figures. It's it's based on a lot of uh, experiment, so it's it's not easy to to get a perfect image from the first time because it, it was influenced by so many factors. 
and also how to locate the, the net it's a very also very important because there, there will be a layback uh, from the the sonar and the boat so although there the gps uh, high resolution uh, gps on the boat but you have to adjust or to uh, correct make some correction about the for the real coordinate of the the, the net so there, there must be you have to link the the image and the the, the gps coordinate together that's you can come back and use divers to clean to clean up the the, the net on the sea floor so this, this is also very important or the water temperature is different so many other factors to to influence your image so probably the image won't be clean or it's hard to set its net it's more it's more simple to find the trap and it's difficult to find the net because uh the, the car the crab parts are made by metal and the shape uh, is easy to identify but usually the net is soft it's plastic so they won't reflect too much uh, too much sound wave so it's hard to find the image on the diff it's not easy to 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 distinguish the image on the side scan so not okay so this is a uh, the second way, the size scan sonar. Let's go back, come back. The, the third way is the HRSS, which is high resolution scanning sonar head. Uh, it's a another different sonar. Uh, so the equip sonar equipment will shape like this. And usually they will combine with a tripod and put on the sea floor. Uh, so it must be so the fish, the water condition has be very uh, peace or quiet. It's you, you, they can be cannot be used on the very wave or bad weathers. Like for this one, they use this uh, sonar head HRSS to detect the the pole or pillar of a bridge to see if there's any crack on the on the on the pillar so you can see uh, the resolution of this sonar it's much higher than previous two you can see the the branches with very tiny branches and on, on the on, on these pillars so it's this project it's done by italy it's working it's a project called is fishing agency and the, the fishermen's and the fishermen association something so i can show you the some photo of their the equipment and they, they published some paper so they use this th this equipment made from no way and this is the, the sonar head so basically they will uh, release the the sonar or the sound a, wave or signal and make a make a turn 30 uh, 360 degree uh, turning and have these round uh, images so if you put this wrong uh, put put the head in, in many different point you can combine this image together but what but each image images will be shaped like uh, will be looks like this you can see the the, the some area is blocked by the three three parts so it, usually it's a wrong image and because the, here it's the the wave it's blocked by the the ship so it's empty it's black here so the, the basically the shape were like this so although they have higher resolution but the area detect will be smaller than the side scan sonar so the equipment well, looks like this with a long cable and uh let's say it's a micro soft uh, software to 
to to combine the whole whole set. Okay, so it will be used like this in the very stable waters, and then, and then with a GPS receiver, and then they mm, lower this tripod and to to take the images. And they also published some papers, which is I think it's this one. Oh, here they use is this one in Italy in some area. So they combine all these circle image together to to identify the hotspot of of this of direct fishing gear, and then they use the camera underwater camera and the divers to 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 remove the the, the net and to recover if the biodiversity something like that so so use a use a sonar to find the net first and then and ask the the diver to 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 went there and clean up and to recall the impact to the marine animals okay and this HRSS, this this team also published a paper called uh, "How to Deal with Seafloor Marine Litter" and, and review paper. So in this table, uh, because it's it's quite new, it's published last year or 2020. Uh, and so they compare different methods, like the optical method, like divers or camera mounted on RVs or a drifting drop from UH, I, I don't know what this is. It's an acute, acoustical method, which is sonar, like many different traditional, or this is side scan sonar and multi brain sonar and HRSS. So the, the, the resolution or the detectable target dimension is much better with this HRSS. But the mapping uh, rate is relative lower, so you so you can compare there some uh, limitations on different like depths or button types with this uh, this table. Okay. Okay, the, the next one is the surveys features uh, surveys. So the first is you use the boat based surveys. Uh, so this, uh, and in, the, in this report, they said an excellent method to locate the buoys of lost fishing traps, the shellfish traps or lost gear net uh, used to, to, is to, to use the boat, but uh, boat based survey are best conduct in area of high concentration of lost gear as few cost will prohibit intensive survey in large area with low concentration of lost gears. So there are two uh, importance, uh, which is you ha have to find the buoys. If, if there's no buoys, there's, there's no way to find a trap or gear net because you, you, this, you can only uh, Search the the survey water surveys, and the second is the high concentrations, because uh, you have to know the where is the the the, the hot spot first. And usually this will combine with the removal uh, activity. So like there are some divers waiting on the boat. Once find the the buoy was not related to any fishermen, the, the divers can can directly go 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 do the underwater cleanups. And another is the aero surveys. So, so in some project, they use the fixed wing uh, airplane to fly in a, in a low, uh, low height and uh, to a visual survey from airplane flying a low attitude has successfully uh, located Delicate fishing, shellfish part where buoys remain on the surface of the water. So, this is also very important that there has 
must be some buoys and can be detected by the aerial survey. And uh, another key point is that uh, you, you have to, uh, some people on the airplane has, has to use uh, hand GPS to, to record the waypoint, to record the, or the or longitude and the altitude uh, where the, they spot the, 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 the buoys that the, somebody else can come back and do the cleanups because uh, the, the airplane usually fly very fast. So you have to collect the, the right coordinate and usually the coordinate is, is very uh, coarse, it's not precise. And the next one is the underwater uh, diver survey and the drop camera surveys. So the first is a diver survey. I think this diver survey is very <laughs> old style and traditional and it looks dangerous. So in some, some projects, I think it's in Hawaii, they use this method. Uh, two divers were towed at one time, towed by a small boat and keeping about seven feet apart. And so you can imagine uh, two divers with a snorkeling, uh, with a face mask and a snorkel and, and face down to see if there's any uh, net uh, underwater. So the water must be very clean. Uh, and when the gear was spotted, the diver will release the boat and the single note with their hand to the boat, then wait for the boat return, begin the retrieval of the gear. So they, there has to be one spotter, I mean, one person on the boat, which continuously check the, the diver's single notes because the diver will uh, lose their hand and to, to add, so, and then the boat have to uh, turn, make a U-turn and uh, to to prepare uh, the, the remo removal equipment. Uh, I think it's tried maybe old, old style, but in some area, maybe the coral reef area, it still works because the water is very clean and, and the water maybe it's shallow and uh, if there's no other uh, risk, so it may be the efficiency is high for, for this traditional method. And another is the drop camera. Uh, because our, uh, we just uh, have some survey of this drop camera technique. So I can show you some website of this kind of drop camera. Wait a minute. Uh, sorry, I just opened those. Uh, those links. Uh, okay, so actually it is uh, two different category of the underwater camera. One is called token, towed camera, and another is called drop camera. So the so by the name you can see towed camera is a uh, how can I say a equipment that towed by a ship and with uh, with camera and the trudge on it sometimes it has another e equipment so the first tow camera i think it's invented by this uh, woods hole oceanographic institute so after that many people call, call it token and another is drop cam so i can show you some some sample of Draken. Wait, so wait a minute. Let me open those links. So...
Okay, this is a, a drop can. Uh, it's a it's a commercial kit. Uh, you can buy in, include a GoPro camera and some uh, lighting systems and with a, and a, a cable to provide the uh, uh, electricity. And it's not it's ex expensive. So you can use uh, like one, sorry, it's, it's okay. one light or two light. And this is used to to detect the, like the dam, uh, water dam. Is there any crack on the water dam or is there any fish on the, on, on, on the, on the water dam? So he also used to, used by to, to check if there uh, any, uh, any fishing gear on the sea floor. So, so people in that in that report said, uh, sometimes people will use a side scan sonar to locate the, the net first, and the second they will use drop cam to check if it's a net or just a rock or others other stuff other things. So it's kind of second check if it's uh, if it's confirmed it's a net. So the third step will use the divers to, go to to do the removals. So so this is drop can. So GoPro like so you can see the image well looks like this. And just to check the the some underwater uh, constru construction is is broken or or not. Like here is something broken. Use this this drop cam to to find some, some broken. And then the token token will be looks like this. It's, it will be more um, more expensive. So it's a camera and a, a, a cable. Something sometimes a, a HD cable and and some light. So. You can see the how the token works. Will be like this. That's a lot of LGs on the sea floor. Uh, I feel the token is not very. This one is not very stable on the sea floor. It's keeping hitting the ground. So the image must be not very good. Okay, so this is a token. Uh, okay. And then there are some uh, cheap options for the angulars or the the fishermen or ang angular, the, the recreational fishers. Mm, they will use some very simple things to just to check if there are any fish on the in their fishing ground. So it is much very simple and cheap, but uh, the resolution must be low and the, the the angle is also very low or it's not durable for this equipment. So people can, can buy in in Alibaba or Taobao or some ch Chinese uh, online sh shops. Okay. So let's go back to the, so that's not only drop can, it's also another token, another different, yeah, many different underwater camera systems. Okay, uh, this is uh, the dragging and the grabbing surveys. Mm, I think it's not to locate, but it's kind of try to, the goal of is to, to, to re remove Oh, so the first is uh, they use this kind of like a, a, a anchor or a grapple and tow these things on the sea floor to to re remove the net. And another thing I think is very interesting, they use a very simple uh, equipment, uh, very DIY equipment. They use they. they they bend some uh, iron nails 
and uh, put the nails into uh, a branded, uh, branded uh, cable or a wire to, I mean, to insert the, the nail into the, in, into this rope, banded, branded rope, and uh, you use some wire to fix it. So there will be a lot of hook on this rope. And they told this rope and with this one, two, three steps, and then that can uh, remove or retreat this uh, trap, a uh, crap trap. So once they use the sonar or other equipment to locate this trap, they can use this master to like to to catch this trap. And this is published by a, a, a report called not this one here, this one. Uh, directly crab trap removal in in this basin. I think it's in uh, in United States. It's in uh, Louisiana. There's a crab fishing ground here with a lot of derelict fishing gear and cause a lot of problem. And the so the local fishermen and the people has this developed this, this technique to re remove the net, the, the traps. Okay, so the last one is fishery data and the local knowledge. So in this is Assessing local knowledge of fishing gear loose, including uh, fishery data. And, uh, and you can also ask the divers, the recreational divers to, or ask them to uh, collect the photos, like the, the Paddy Hoja Aware or other uh, recreational um, uh, divers. There are many projects around the world. And, and probably because of this GGGI published paper report published in 2017, but in 2020, I think you may already know, or we already read this paper. It's called using the material material flow analyze to generate evidence on plastic waste management from commercial fishing gear in Norway. Uh, I think this paper is very. Uh, very important, important because it, they use the MFA to try to understand the, the whole whole flow of the of the commercial gears in the whole Norways. Uh, so that set this uh, this system this this map, and I think uh, many other researchers follow their methodology try to analyze the material flow of the fishing gears. And uh, oh, because they, they made this this map uh, based on the fish fishermen questionnaires. So they give fishermen questionnaires like, to ask them like the, the the loss rate and how to how to reuse, repair, re repair or how you deal with the the, the the net that cannot be used, the, the one net or the west something. So they calculate the the, the whole whole system. So that it's also very important to to get the data from local peoples to understand the, the like the understand the where is is the the hotspot of the lost lost gear. I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Thank you very much, Jason. Uh, I really appreciate you choose this very useful document for our seminar. And anyone who has uh, comments or question, floor is yours. Okay, Sammy. Hi, Jason. This is Sammy. Thanks so much for um, sharing this report with us. Um, Sunny might be able to actually elaborate further, but Sunny and I actually have had um, a meeting with the author of this report, um, Joan Drinklin. Mm -hmm. um, Sunny actually has a 
personal connection. Um, Sunny, you might want to elaborate later on. Um, but yeah, so uh, we're very much aware of the fact that she's pretty much um, been leading. She's really like the vanguard in terms of you know, um, rapid retrieval methodologies, and she's very much invested in um, trying to resolve um, Jarlik Fishinger, and I'm sure you're pretty much <laughs> aware of that as well. Um, I just have a comment and a question. Um, so one thing we, I mean, at Ocean ourselves, we've been really grappling with this idea of how do we get um, the fishermen to, I guess, cooperate better, because after all, at the end of the day, we just want less um, sea-based marine litter um, in the ocean, and that's kind of like a common ground that we all share. Um, and it has stood out to me on many occasions that I think this collaboration really only works if there um, is some sort of, if, if fishermen or like the fishing co uh, cooperations really kind of help us out on an almost like an honor system because we really do need them to be a little bit more transparent with their direct fishing gear um, and you know what 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 the realities really are out there you know like how often do you lose your gears or you know what are some of the difficulties that you face when it comes to retrieving these things and um, it needs that sort of like transparency I think in order for everything to work out and I think this isn't just an isolated issue just for South Korea. I think many countries actually face this common um, struggle and difficulty. So um, as a segue to that, uh, how, how is the relationship with like fishermen or like fishing cooperations in Taiwan with the government agencies that are trying to impose the regulations or sort of, you know, manage the sea-based marine litter that comes from commercial fishing or even like subsistence fishing? Do you can you maybe um, share your thoughts or, you know, what, what the realities are? Okay. Thank you, Sammy's question and comment. Uh, yes, I can share some uh, policy and uh, effort from, by, our, or, um, by our government. The first is the, the eco-feeling. I mean, uh, the, the, the OCA, Ocean Conservancy, Conserv Fleet, okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, Eco Fleet, uh, the OCA, Ocean Con Conservation Administration uh, has this project for, I think for three or four years. So they keep uh, invite all the fishermen to join the Eco Fleet. Uh, if the fishermen come meet that they can bring their own trash and uh, the trash they on their nets back to the harbor so that they can uh, they can join the eco fleet team and they can get some um, like, uh, like a gift or I mean when they come back to the, the fishing pole, the Coast Guard will record the weight of their trash. Mm -hmm. uh, so if, if they reach some amount, they can exchange some, 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 I, some goods like the dish cleaners or shampoos or, or some cooking oils, some, some items that they, do, that they do use. So, so, so I think that project is very successful in in, in Taiwan, because I think that for those fishermen who join this eco fleet, they have some honor in, in their mind. And there are some really old, really um, passionate fishermen in this, in this project. So if there is no fish, they even, they also uh, go out and use, use the, the net to, to, to or they clean up the harbor of volunteering. So that is the first called eco fleet, and the second one is the, the geo net marking scheme, marking and the reporting. So that is a, uh, I think I, if you can read a, the report by Triple G I, they 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 mention they mention this in their probably not this one latest. Uh, report. 
Let me check which one. Uh, oh, cannot find it out. Okay, so so our our fishery agency has. Mm, oh, this one. Okay, can you still see my screen share? No, no? you're gonna have to skip share it back okay. to that again. Okay, yeah. okay. Okay, so the triple GI published this this report to update the, the best practice framework. And in the in the page uh, page twenty six. Uh, they mentioned about the the GeoNet marking policy um, in Taiwan. So when they publish this report, it's just a, a proposal, but now it's it's already become a a, a law. So from last last ju July, every GeoNet fisherman has to have to uh, mark their GeoNet. And at the beginning of this year, they have to re report their lost gear in some form, and to fill some form like the to to fill the locate location of where they lost their gear, what type of, of the gear, how long of the gear, and uh, something like do you do you have tried to uh, oh. find your gears, something like that. That and after some. Some months, I think, if anyone found the, the gear with some people's name or the fishing boat ID, but with no uh, report record, that will be fine. The fisherman will be fine. So that's it. Uh, I think the very big step for our fishery agency um, or fishery policy. Okay, that's two, and... two things I want to share. Right. Can I just ask a quick follow-up question? So, in terms of the you said, so if the fishermen don't, if the fishermen don't report and or record the derelict fishing gear or the gill nets in this case, um, and they'll be fined, do do you feel like the fine is a pretty steep fine that you feel like is a heavy fine enough for fishermen to for the violating fishermen to feel like? Mm -hmm. Or I guess, I don't, do you feel like it's a deterrence enough? Do you feel like it's a good enough of a fine that it will deter people from from not wanting to violate this law? Uh, I think the biggest important is the inconvenience uh, because uh, before this policy, the most convenient way to deal with the GeoNet is to dump, high, dump at sea. Right. Yes, but now because the fishermen need to spend extra money to to mark the buoys. They don't have to mark all the buoys on the GeoNet, but they have to mark the buoy in some uh, some sections or like uh, one buoy mark and the three buoy don't have to mark something like that. So so it's very, uh, so they, 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 if they want to dump this GeoNet, their GeoNet at sea, they need to spend some extra time and extra effort to remove those the buoys with their names, so it's mm. inco inconvenient for them to dump this thing at sea. And there are also some some other policy to to like the the the, the buyback project operated by the fisher fishermen associations to buy the their gear net and sell to the the company who do the chemical nylon recycling in Taiwan, so it's a, so it's it's more, uh, more easier to to deal with the, the net compared to to previous one. But the fine, I, I we have never see any any fine any fine or any I mean any case that has been reported. That really find somebody who who didn't report but but lost their gears. So I don't know if the fisherman is really care about the, this five thousand US dollar fine or mm. or not. But okay. it's not a small money. Right. Mm -hmm. I have a thank you. 
I have a short question about gear marking system, Jason. Do yes. You, in your area, do you use electronic system or manually writing system for uh, For Kionet, yeah. uh, I, I mean, think most- gears. Most of gears. Oh, mm, like the long line, long lines, the every long line fishery, they use the radar. Mm -hmm. uh, to to locate their gears, mm -hmm. there are mm, radars at the each end of their long lines. But for the uh, GeoNet, because most of them are family fisheries, they only use sometimes they only use the uh, LED light uh, at the two end of their net. Mm -hmm. Sometimes even there's no light; they're just two buoys, two small buoys. Uh, styrofoam buoys or uh, other foam buoys to 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 mark the, the location of that that night. But now with this uh, policy, there must be the name of the 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 keeper and the the, the ID of the boat. Okay. Any any. Other questions? If not, um, the author of the report, Joanne Drew Queen, I met yes. her uh, last year. Uh, Sammy mentioned about the meeting between us. She was writing a report on best practices of delayed fishing gears. So she wanted to uh, know about Korean case about buyback buy program. So we had the one line meeting, but we didn't have enough time to provide some information to, to fill the knowledge she wanted. So in FAO report she prepared, didn't include our case, but in our case, buyback program is stopped by central government is only managed by local governments. Um, it is a lot of uh, moral, issue. moral issues. Administrative uh, issues. Yes, administration <laughs> difficulties here. So yes. I didn't, I don't think this is a successful, kind of successful program. Uh, and I think you're, you, you, you mentioned the Echo Fleet <coughs> program project by Ocean Conservancy. So you uh, received the fund from OC and you provide some administration services or uh, which service? Uh, service which provides? Oh service? no, the it's it's not OC. It's OCA. It's a government administration called Ocean Conservation Administration. So the money is from your, the, the governmental body. Yes, yes. Ah, I see. Echo fleet. Echo fleet is great. 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 To do some uh, calculation for the data of eco fillet. So, Nin just because they, we just write the wrote the annual report for the, the OCA. So, we have the data of eco fillet. And mm. my colleague Nin just to check the, how many fillet uh, in, in Taiwan mm -hmm. in, in its programs. And I would like to share some, some quick some photos with you that we already have some pre pre very preliminary tests with the drop, drop cam. So we have some, we use the, uh, no. sorry, I don't have too much detail on the, on our systems, but you can see there are two, uh, two flashlight mm -hmm. and the one GoPro, it's not very clear here. It's a GoPro Hero 9 here. And with a cable, 
uh, it's called call 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 or something cable and connect with my cell phone so we can uh, see the real time uh, images underwater underwater images from land so we would use this drop cam in some uh, lagoons of oyster cultures you can see a lot of oyster raft and so one, we want to detect the, if there are any oyster code, which is made by nylons in the sea floor, see? Because there has a lot of uh, this nylon oyster code or oyster uh, rope on the, on the seas, on the beach. And they also use this kind of nylon. It's a wider nylon to to wrap or to bind the, the, the bamboos. So th this is the, the, the nylon code they use to for the oyster shells. And this is for the bamboo raft. And both of them are very common on the sea, sea floor near shore. So you can see these images. They are um, actually it's dirty on the sea floor and with our camera. So, but it's difficult because the water, uh, it's not very, it's very dirty. Uh, mm. So the transparency, it's very, very low. So we, we, we can, the, 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 the area we can see is very narrow. So we are trying to uh, advance or to improve our, our system and try to get a clearer or wider images. Now we can find the hotspot of these oyster ropes and maybe we can plan, plan some further clean up event for, for underwater clean up event for, for, for this issue. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. Any other questions? No? No one has questions or comments. Okay, thank you so much uh, for your efforts, Jason. Uh, may I ask why you choose this uh, document for the webinar? Oh, mm, because we want to, uh, we want to try something or do something for the seafloor mm. debris, especially in the in the west coast of Taiwan, because the west. West coast of Taiwan, it's very shallow, yeah. and the the water quality usually very. It's, no. it's not suitable for for diving. Mm -hmm. So although the underwater clean up is very very popular in Taiwan, but they only focus on very small very small area, which is the the diving spot. Mm -hmm. But the only diving spot in Taiwan is some our islands or the some reef areas but usually the geonet was were used in the western coastline which is not allow the divers to to do the cleanup but we believe that it's very dirty or it's very high concentration of net and the, the gears like oyster gears because they are heavy on the seafloor so we want to try to uh, develop some equipment and start to survey the, the most stable water in the lagoons or the near shore areas this year. Oh, Maybe does, the drop can or a tall can. Mm -hmm. oh, does uh, government, a governmental agency uh, clean up the underwater? The no. government only hire divers to clean up the, the reef, reef areas. So the government also, um, I think they don't think about the hotspots, the the un, it's in a, a, other place. They because the, all the divers, uh, most of them are recreation, recreational divers. Mm -hmm. So all the some they all do concentrate their effort in in the diving spot. Mm -hmm. I think it's very uh, it's not good because. People have to understand that yes, 
they, they might be other hotspot in the in other areas. So we use our own money to start this project uh, last month. <laughs> I see. Yes. So you don't have any regulation to stop the uh, or the encourage the fishermen uh, control their own gears in the their own uh, fishing ground. Uh, I think or... the, the gear marking of GeoNet is the only one. Mm -hmm. Others just no, there's no controls. Mm -hmm. So so the Coast Guard won't check your trash or how many gear you you take out or how many you, you bring back. There's no regulation about this. So at the moment, the government doesn't deal with, doesn't uh, care about on, uh, underwater fishing gears, direct fishing gears at the moment, right? Uh, like a cleanup or they, punishment. They, Punishment? No, no punishment. They just encourage the 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 each city government or a county government to to form their own underwater clean up team. Maybe it's volunteer team or a professional team. But these those divers, if they those divers or those cities were located at the west coast, there's no diving areas. So they will travel to the islands and to, to, to do that. It's very, it's so ridiculous for us because the, because the, gov the central government asked them, you have to clean out the underwater net, but there is no diving area allow them to go diving, go scuba. So they travel for a long distance, like from the, even from the outer island, take the flight back to the, the, the coral reefs and uh, get the data. Yes, we clean up uh, maybe 10 kilogram of net, but in other cities. <laughs> so we think it's it's ridiculous. We think you have to derive the, the suitable, because every city has geonet fisheries. They must be their, their own direct gear, fish gear in their own, uh, in their own waters the floor of their own waters. Okay. I think it's time to wrap up. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Jason, again. Uh, thank you, everyone, for participating today. We have new participants, but we don't have introduced them at the moment. So I'll see you next month. Uh, the next schedule will be of April. Yes. One of Ocean team will choose one paper and share it with you before the webinar.